Hey guys, um, I am going to try to keep this one short, honestly, but um, we are his voice. And it's just time to kind of stand up. Uh, Psalms 29, about a year ago, I uh, caught that one, and I was talking about the voice of the Lord as thunder and lightning, and, and that was pretty cool. And then the Lord spoke to me and he said, we were his voice. And I'm like, man, that's pretty cool, God, but that's your voice. But then Revelation, just study the voice. Um, it's in Revelation. It's in, it's in a bunch of scriptures about us being his voice. And there's so much noise and pollution and just stuff going on all around us, guys. It's vying for our attention. Um... And people, you know, it's going to be different. It's like, it's like my, my grandkids, my wife, and even the kids, um, my mom when she was still alive. If they, if one of them called, nanoseconds, I recognize their voice. God recognizes your voice, but he wants to hear your voice, but he wants you to hear him too. So a lot of this is going to be one in the secret place. That's why it says, he that has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit has saying to the church. He wants to give us directions, guys. And he wants us to be his voice. It's time for the church to rot, the body of Christ to rise and shine. For the glory of the Lord is upon you. And quit letting this, the, this world, including the church, try to dismantle, discredit, take us down, um, get us to shut up out of order, trying to steal our voice, calling it opinions. Opinions is for the world, God. I'm not trying to be an opinionated guy. I'm just directional. I'm telling you who's your source. It should be God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and his word. And you get it in your secret place, a lot of it, because he wants to give you direction. Because he wants you to hear what the Spirit has to say into the church. So that when you are his voice and you get it out there, it's true, correct, right. Wisdom from above. Yeah, we're going to miss the mark some, of course. But that's not my heart intentionally, and I really don't think it's yours. So anyhow, that's why I got this blog page on Wix. Just look us up at JesusIsAliveInAmerica.com. I, I want to hear your voice, guys. I want to hear your story, guys. Um, that's one of the books I got out, but it's called Jesus Christ in You, The Hope of Glory. I get on Amazon. I got a free copy, uh, ebook. I can email you. I can email you the first page. Just contact me at JesusIsAliveInAmerica at gmail.com. You know, but we're his voice, guys, and his feet. We all have a story because we're his glory. He chose us from the foundation of the world. He chose us in our mother's womb before we were even formed. Created us. Not we created him. We're too busy trying to create stuff and create God and convenient and sorry for the hand motions. Um, but he created us to be his voice. So it's time to rise and shine, but you know, it's not time to spit out a bunch of vomit and puke either, guys. Okay, it just, you know, filter it through, through the Holy Ghost, filter it through prayer, filter it through dedication, you know, if God showed, I mean, there's a couple things that he showed me, more than one, but I'm like, man, God, I gotta live my whole Christian life without seeing that. Pick somebody else. So, I don't know, you know, maybe your voice is on, on, on all the social media garbage. Maybe not. Maybe it's in the, the, the pew next to you. Maybe not. Maybe it's at 7-Eleven. Maybe not. Maybe it's at your work. I don't know. Maybe it's with your children. Maybe it's with your husband, your wife, your parents. Don't discount any of that, guys. Maybe it's a small church. Maybe it's a big church. Matthew, Matthew 20 is a great scripture. It's one of the many great scriptures, but you could be the, the doorkeeper or a senior pastor that saved 150 years with a million people in your church. You know, you're not going to live 150 years. Anyhow. That's, my, that's kind of my point. It's not about our greatness or grandness or who we are. 
is who he is. So it's time to get it out, guys. Get it out rightly. So, because it is time, I've heard this for 38 years, the world's kind of coming apart, Paul, Paul, busting loose, God's about to come back at any minute, Jesus is about to come, bust the clouds wide open, and it could be today before this message is over with, but you know, right now there's just so much white trash and pollution, even, you know, on the internet, I'm, I'm one of the, I don't like to do all this social media garbage, but that's what the Lord told me to do, so mostly really because I want to get a your voice so send me your stories that's where comments are on there that's where the blog page is on there at wix kind of lame but it was what i had to do with them with them working within a budget shoestring budget really but there's a lot going on guys but it's time that we are his voice man there's so many different distractions some of the stuff is coming up i don't want to Get in too far involved in other messages because there's just too much. But even sitting there at the computer and looking at stuff, and I'll be doing something and bing, pop up, this pops up, that pops up, this person, that person. It's, it's just, in, in the, it seems like the screen's gotten smaller and smaller when I'm working on. Cause there's all this stuff all around, all the peripheral stuff, go anywhere, billboards, and you know, you pull up to a stop sign and there's a car blast and some rap garbage i'm not saying rap is garbage but rap garbage that's just polluted and diluted and every other word is the f-bomb and stuff and your windows are shaking it's like man there's distractions all over the place i, I just canceled our our tv subscription because it was becoming a distraction Caught myself, oh, I'm trying to rightly divide the word and blah, 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 and blah, 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 find out what's going on in the world. Well, the world is coming apart, guys, at the seams. Where is voice? And guess what? This is part of it, guys. This is why I'm even putting this out there. We're all barking about gun control, and yeah, we should be able to. I got I got some. We all should, that, that you know, we should be able to. That shouldn't be a problem. The big thing lately was about the tax exemption. Well, it was about the money, guys. That most of it was about the money, and that that's why people were barking. Maybe you should just be paying your taxes. I don't know. Guys, pray about it. But the not that many people were talking about the root cause of the problem. It was sin. When you come against sin and say things, everybody's like you're judgmental. You're not in the Bible. You're not loving. You're not this. You're not that. Well, you know what? I, that's not true. I'm just not going to let sin in, guys. It's time for us to rise and shine and portray the true love of Christ. Just, there's plenty of us out there that are, that are teaching the right things. Maybe not 100% perfect. Of course not. It's still human and working on it. But if you come against, there's a spirit out there, God. There's a lot of spirits, guys. Isaiah 27 was a, it was a good one. It's about a twisted spirit. Everything's twisted and nobody knows the truth and everybody's lying and everybody's, you know, I mean, when I go on to YouTube, it's like all these pop-ups and goofy pictures, goofy picture of Hillary and all about her emails and just a bunch of junk. Old news, guys, are about, you know, I'm not trying to politicize it. It could be about any anybody candidates and what people said and all that what's what's jesus saying what's god saying what's the holy ghost saying what are you what are you getting in your secret place in the word and if you and if you start speaking the truth and love ezekiel 33 great scripture was on somebody po posted on one of my facebook feeds ezekiel 33 18 that was great ezekiel 33 i think it's like 20 he wishes that no man would perish, but that they would repent and turn from their wicked ways. Turn from their ways. Second Chronicles seven fourteen. But when we start portraying the truth and the scripture and start standing up against sin, idols, and just 
the false narratives that are out there. The enemy wants to steal our voice, guys. Did it start with Adam and Eve? Did God really say that? Questioning, doubting. Well, if you really, really, really get close to him and get it in prayer and really seeking him, and you'll have it solidified in your heart. So anyhow, um, I said about the, we're worried about gun control. We're worried about, you know, all these other issues. We're worried about the taxes. We're worried about, man, pick one. But when you start coming against the sin and the adultery and the wickedness and the high places and the things that are coming, the enemy wants to steal your voice, guys. And it's time to not let him anymore. That's where I'm at. Um, I got a taste of this. I put out, and all it was was, these are great scriptures. One was Isaiah 27. One was 2 Timothy 2, 4, 1 through 4. And one was Romans 1. Read all of it. Hit enter. Man, in nanoseconds, I was censored, guys. Almost like the scriptures were censored, taken down, voice stolen. Why? Come, because coming against some sacred cows. Call it all kinds of hate. Now you don't love God, and no, it has nothing to do with it. I just want to see people set free. Sin is sin, guys. Whatever it looks like, it's messy, ugly. It's time to just tell the truth. There's another lady. Look her up. This is probably, you know, I got a taste of it too. We're being censored, guys. And the word's trying to be taken out. It's taken out of the world, the church, the, you know. I mean, look at it. This is maybe it's even a sacred cow. Go tell, go tell people, tell whoever. I don't care. Congress, president, whomever. In God we trust. Go tell them you want to put in Jesus we trust on the dollar bill. And look at it. Man, guys. There's so much. But this lady got a taste of it. And it's a great scripture. I got it. Not too long ago, and it wasn't really like some secret revelation, but it's just good for me. But Genesis 1, 26 and 27. Kind of about the equality piece, kind of going along the same lines with the Matthew 20 piece. But she brought out this lady, Pavia Resinus. It's P-A-I-V-I-R-A-S-A-N-E-N-S. -E Came up on my Twitter. Um, two, I think it was 2004 she started it, but um, maybe, maybe I was wrong. Maybe I'm wrong, but anyhow, it came out recently and she got censored because she brought out the Roman scripture. She brought out the Genesis scripture. accused of stuff guys it's already happening all around us when you say something about the truth and about the gospel even church people try to cut you off supposed church people i'm not knocking anybody that's not that's not my message it's not what i'm saying i'm directional and pray about it. Yours may look a little different than mine. Like I said, you got a different voice. My, all my grandkids, I recognize them, and God recognizes us too. And that's why it says, you know, Ephesians 3, 4, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways, and he'll direct your paths. He wants us to he that have an ear to hear. Let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. He wants to talk to us, guys, so we can be his voice and portray the truth. Not a bunch of hogwash and opinions and idle stuff, idle worshiping stuff, and just 
garbage. Why are we eating so much garbage? Why is some of this stuff so popular? The sensationalism of it all, guys. What's your, what's your purpose? What's he telling you to do? We are his voice, guys. It's time to rise and shine. We don't have to be argumentative. We don't have to be abrasive. We don't have to be louder than everybody else. Maybe, but maybe not. But I don't know. What's he telling you? Don't let the enemy tell you. Did God really say that? The fear and the unbelief and the doubt, the distraction and the trips and traps and... Man, no. If God's telling you to do something, do it. The Holy Ghost is telling you to do something. That's direction. If Jesus is telling you to do something, do it. But there again, who's your source? Is it that river of living water? Where are you getting this from? Has it been birthed in prayer? Has it been birthed in taking it to God? He's showing me some things, and I got a dream that's that I'm about a storm coming to America, and he's like, but he's still adding to it, and he won't let me release it yet, and it's nothing to do with me and a secret revelation, because look at the the YouTube stuff I got about the secret revelation, not First Peter, I think, too, something, but it's not a, it's not a secret, guys. Revelation is for the body, for all of us. We should be that connectivity, building the body up, not tearing it down. So that the world can see our love and portray. But if there's sin, guys, we got to kind of call it out, honestly. Because that's separating us from the love of Christ. Talking to a lady recently, and she was like, man, when your kids are little... You don't tell them, you know, the street's out in front of your house. You don't say, hey, you know, when you get 60, I'm going to buy you a really nice car and you can drive wherever you want and you be your own boss or whatever. You know, all the grandiose stuff. No, you tell them, stay out of the street. Don't run in the street. Don't get run over. Look both ways. Give them a little bit of a warning. God give Adam an evil warning. Don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Least to die. And the enemy comes in. Did God really say that? Guys, birth it in prayer. Your secret place. Talk to him. And if he's telling you to do something, do it. That's where I'm at. I'm I used to, you know, man, I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm just not. But I'm still, but but my prayer is this, guys, honestly. This is one of my part of my prayer. I'm like, God, oh, but I don't want to do it with an attitude either. Because I can get one. Like, you know, maybe like you, maybe not, but it's me. He just wants us to come before him. It's probably not preacher friendly, but sometimes I'm pulpit friendly even, but sometimes I've come to God and I was like, man, God, this really sucks. Some situation or something, I don't, you know, just come to him. He knows your heart. He wants to help you straighten it out. He wants to give you direction. He wants you to be his voice. But he wants you to be the right voice. Not the voice of the enemy. Not the twisted up. The Isaiah 27. Not twisted up. Even scriptures can get twisted, guys. They're not twisted. It's us. Up here. Know it all. Not in here. So let's just be the love of Christ. Let's portray. Let's help set people free. You're not going to set them free by beating them to death with a hammer and, you know, like the dog that pooped on the floor and here's your sin. But at the same time, we can't just ignore it and say, oh, it's okay. It's not okay. You got to come away from it. Why does it say turn from your wicked ways in that scripture about 714? Turn. Change. Repent. Clean up. But why? And we need to portray the love of Christ. Why would you want to do that? What's the, what, you know? Where's that going? Why would you just, if we stick on just the sin piece, then it becomes 
something it's not intended to be either. It's how do we get people out of this mess? And where do we take them? That was the whole point of Jesus, guys, his son. So that we could, if we're full of him, and he's living in us, and we let the Holy Ghost lead God direct us, we can get that relationship back with God and come boldly before the throne of grace and glory because we're his sons and his daughters. And get it from the source. That's what he wants. Walk with us in the cool of the day. That's why we have two ears. He just wants us to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Get it in our heart. So anyhow, we're his voice. We're his choice to be his voice. So um, email us. Jesus is alive in America. Gmail.com. Check us out. Google us. Jesus is alive in America.com. Uh, the connectivity, guys. I just want to. I want to hear your story, guys. Comments. Um, send it to us. Um, that's just what it's about. That's the direction I'm trying to go with this. To get, and I want to get your voice out. So I'll end with this. The Lord's got me writing these books. I wrote two. Not even a really, probably not even a great author. I don't know, I'm, but I am a child of the King, so it's. And I got a bunch of them right now that I've already got two out and a bunch more coming. And it's like, man, I'm kind of a little overloaded. It was me. I grew up in Minnesota and I'm kind of, you know, I want to go rent a cabin somewhere and some cool lake and just for six months sit there and just be with the Lord and write this stuff down. And yeah, I got a bunch of it in, the, in a tablet now on a computer, but not happening. So, but I'm saying that to say this, Amazon, KDP, Kindle Direct Publishing, it's all free, guys. You just have to put it in a certain format, Georgia 11, is why I use for the font, but you send it to them, they help you create the cover, the book, the everything, they price it, put it on Amazon, it's not even really about that, but it gets out on Kindle. Um, so maybe, maybe that's the direction you need to go to get your voice out. That's where I'm at right now. But I don't know. What's your, what, what is he telling you to do? Just do it, guys. Not just do it, but do it. Do it well. But how you can do it well is with a lot of prayer and dedication and your life right with God so that it comes out and it sets people free because it's not about you or me. Then... Or our church, or our program, or our ministry, or our building, or our YouTube channel, or any of that. The Spirit of the Lord. That's what it says in Psalms 29. Is that over many waters. Get it out there, guys. So anyhow, we love you guys. Um, I was going to make this short, but it doesn't seem to be happening. But anyhow, so just... Love you guys. Uh, share these videos with people, guys. Help me get this out. But I really want you to be his voice. So send me your, st email me your story or link or, or whatever. You know, I'm not a technical guy. I'm challenged on that. Um, and I got a bunch of Facebook friends. And I apologize to all you Facebook friends, especially. There's hundreds of them, 900 of them almost. And it's like, man, I can't even... Not that I don't want to email you back. It's just that it's just, man, it's kind of, it's, you get sucked into this really quickly. And it's not that I don't want to. I'm trying to discern it. But I have picked up a few good things already out of it. And I'm still working on that. It's just, I need a lot of prayer. I'm trying to work through this. And I'm technically challenged on it, for one. But, um, so just bear with me. But, you know, one of them that I picked up on, on was, it's a website called On Our Knees. It's a it's a closed website, but it's a really good one. On Our Knees in Prayer. On Our Knees. It's, it's actually it's, it's quotes the scripture, Second Chronicles seven fourteen. But there's plenty of them out there, guys. So you know if that's part of you know that's the connectivity. It may not be with me or whatever. You know I'm not. Just, that's not my point. We're his story and his glory, and it's time to get it out and quit letting the world shut us out. 
Especially because if if we don't, if the love of Christ isn't in us, how, how, how are they going to get set free? Same within the church world, guys. It's a kind of in a mess. You know, we're all talking about make America great again and stuff. Only Jesus is going to be able to do that, guys. Only God, only the Holy Ghost at the center. Not us and our political systems or wills or just laws or just stuff. We're his voice. His choice to be his voice. He chose us. So speak up. If he's telling you to speak up, write it down. If he's telling you to write it down, go to, if he's telling you to go to some a city or if he's on a mission trip or a different part of the country or go to 7-Eleven or minister to somebody at the hospital or the jailhouses or, you know, imagine that, guys. I, I'm going to end with this, okay? I don't know why I'm going to say this, but, you know, it's just there, there's a deeper message to this. But, you know, kind of like the Coliseum mentality that a lot of churches have and bigger and grander and all this other stuff well back in the roman empire what did they use the coliseums for entertainment and to kill the christians to arm up with lions and bears or whatever man guys really pray about it if, if god's telling you to do that great awesome do it still his voice doesn't have to be to millions but maybe it is maybe it's not maybe it's just to the to your family maybe it's just to your spouse maybe it's just to your kids maybe it's to your neighbors that's the matthew piece that's the went after the 99 and left the one that's the sheep speak what god is telling you to speak quit listening to the enemy God really say that? Of course he did if you know it in your heart. So anyhow, we love you. Um, be his voice. His choice to be his voice. It, and like I said, it might just be in the spoken word. It might be in the written word. It might be in a letter to somebody. He told me to send some... Some, some books and some letters to certain people. I was like, man, really, God? Okay, well, all right. I did. It's just something he told me to do. It was like 10 of them, but different people. I'm not going to tell you who, but one of them I was like, really, God? Why? Because what they're saying and portraying and being isn't very Christian-like. Not even close. I was like, prayed about it, and the Lord said, because he's one of mine. Okay, God, I don't know, you know. That saint not, not leaning on this. I don't know. It's time for us to just sh show the love of Christ, guys. And yeah, if it's calling out an error and sin, do that. If it's not, if it's just portraying love, but, you know, we can't go to the opposite extreme either. We can't go to the one extreme and just be that barking dog and tearing everybody apart and, you know, telling everybody they're sinning and nothing, and, you know, what do we got? What are we offering? What It's an empty box, an empty substance. There's nothing to it. And then the other side of it is just so much love that we just let everything enter in and everything's okay and we don't love Christ if we don't let everybody do whatever they want to do. And live their life any kind of way they want. And everybody's included, inclusive. That's kind of a, man, that's a bad word, guys, almost. But it says many are called, but a few are chosen. And it's not this exclusive boys club either. We're all called. We're all children of his. But get it through prayer. Birth it in prayer. That's why it's so important that the model prayer that's why it's not you know i don't even know if that's the right word but just get it in prayer guys seeking him your source
importance of the source is that it's for all, not just for one or not just because you're polished or unpolished, because you're a, a homeless person or you're the CEO of some big company. It's for all, guys. So anyhow, we love you. Um, didn't think this was going to be that long, but it is. So anyhow, we love you guys. Um, hope you all tune in. Uh, see ya.